Take control on the tennis court with the new Selenko Wideout 305 18x20. Selenko adds a new string pattern to their Wideout line of rackets with the Selenko Wideout 305 18x20. With a focus on outstanding control and feel, the Wideout features a 98 square inch head, a 18 by 20 string pattern with a traditional straight beam. Liquid crystal technology helps reduce vibration while the foam technology in the head provides stability and additional vibration dampening. We think this racket is an ideal option for players looking for a 98 square inch head with an 18 by 20 string pattern for optimal control. Initially, I thought this play test was gonna be a little bit more of a challenge for me uh, due to the fact that I do prefer an open string pattern. I normally stay away from playing with rackets that feature an 18 by 20 string pattern just due to the fact that I always feel like I can't get enough bite and spin uh, with those type of rackets. But this racket definitely surprised me. Uh, I was able to bite down on the ball uh, and produce a decent amount of topspin, uh, which still allowed me to do uh, my typical shots uh, that I would do with a open string pattern. Um, this racket was super maneuverable at net. Um, I loved it for my forehands and backhand. I think the strong suit for this racket for me was definitely my backhand. Uh, I typically struggle with my backhand a little bit more, but this racket does have a little bit of a higher swing weight. So I was really able to allow that weight to transition into my shots uh, on the backhand side. Overall, I would definitely recommend this racket towards anybody that's looking for a 98 square inch head with an 18 by 20 string pattern that does not want to sacrifice too much spin. So I've hit with the Whiteouts 1619 iteration for a good little while and I always really liked the racket and the powerful blade-like 98 square kind of range, but I always thought that it lacked a little something and for the most part the 1820 came along and really has addressed a lot of those issues. Being an 1820, it's not the first string pattern that I'll always reach for, but going back to the 1619, I always thought that the twist weight was a little underwhelming and that the launch angle was a little unwieldy. So for the most part, the 1820 has really addressed those gripes. The racket feels and plays like a really open 18 by 20 pattern, so it was really easy for me to kind of slot my strokes and really feel comfortable from the get-go. The racket itself is kind of in the same stiffness range as you might find with a Pro Staff or an RF and was basically what I've come from before. So again, it was very familiar to my game style. It's very clear from the design of this racket that its emphasis is control and stability and it's definitely not jarring or any sort of discomforting. So I was very pleased with the all around maneuverability and functionality of the racket. Because the specs are a little bit more on the higher end, a little heavier, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this to the intermediate player, more so for the advanced, but the racket again is a very comfortable and very rewarding playing experience, and one that I would definitely recommend to check out for our more advanced players. When Selinko first released the Whiteout series of rackets, I struggled a little bit honestly with the Whiteout 305 and had better success with the 295 just because with the stiffer beam and the weight of the 305, I was just overhitting a little bit on my groundies and with the 295, that lower weight, I didn't, wasn't getting as much plow through. I was able to whip it around better, get more spin and get the ball dipping inside the court. And I was really hoping that the 1820 would address that control issue I had with the heavier 305 gram spec and it has done that. I'm hitting a, a lower trajectory ball than I would out of the open string pattern, but I'm getting nice dive, nice control going into the court. Um, I'm getting plenty of feel in my flat shots, so I feel like I can judge the depth of those. And then when I'm at net, punching away my volleys, also feel like I'm getting good placement there. It's still a very powerful racket. It's got lots of pace on my first serves. When I'm driving the back end, still getting a lot of drive through the court with that. I feel like I'm hitting a nice penetrating ball, but definitely able to control the depth a lot better. And it's a racket I've really enjoyed playtesting. This was my first time testing a Solinko racket, and actually I was super impressed with the Solinko Whiteout 305 1820. Generally speaking, I haven't been a huge fan of 1820 string setups in the past few years. It also doesn't really feel like an 1820 at all. For me, it felt more like a 1619 string setup, which I actually really appreciated because I do like to hit my balls with a lot of spin. And actually, I felt like I was able to generate ample spin and power too with this frame. The racket felt extremely stable, especially on my slices. I really enjoyed it on my backhand slices. The ball stayed very low and I felt like I had great control through my shots. 
Another highlight for me would have been my returns. I really enjoyed stepping into them and just how stable the rack is stayed, no matter what, and I was able to take good control of the rallies early on. All in all, if you haven't tried a Sonico racket yet and you're kind of hesitant, I would say definitely pick this one up, take it out on the court, and you will be surprised by how great it feels. Thanks for watching. We strung up this racket with Sonico Confidential at 53 pounds. For more information on this racket and many others, please go check out Tennis Warehouse, Tennis Warehouse Europe, or Tennis Only. <laughs>